This is a unique project, and a lot of people have a, a lot of interest in this project, as you're aware. Yeah. And, and I think most people in town, the vast majority, would like to see the project go forward. I think there's one sitting back there I know in the second row or third row who really would like to see this go, go forward. He's been at it for a while. Um, but the, the problem that I think has, has been popping up is that the project vision is kind of fuzzy. Uh, and, and I understand you're saying, you know, it's, it's in the preliminary stages and we're using the old um, the old plan, which no one really thinks will be the final plan, I think. You know, I mean, it's... Uh, nor do we propose that it will be in, yeah. you know... Yeah, uh, so the end of the day. That, that I think, it, and that's, I, I have that problem to, to a certain extent, too, uh, that, that it's, it's a fuzzy plan. We have different groups in town very interested in the development, and, and different groups have different ideas about what they'd like to see. Now, clearly, everything can't be encompassed by everyone. And, and, you know, yeah, I mean, and, yeah. and if... But, okay, but there sure. are, for example, the historic buildings, which, which are sitting there. I think they're in a kind of an elephant in a room. And, and if there was more clarity in terms of what, what might happen with those, I think it would be helpful as far as the town is concerned in, in mobilizing even more support for the project. I think I'm more scared of that than you guys are. I mean, in all candor, because there's a master plan that's approved now that contemplates the preservation of three buildings. Mm -hmm. after, that, after that approval was achieved, there was a movement to add three more buildings to an historic registry. That's the hair on this deal. And so from the standpoint of my looking at this and coming in and saying, here's what can or cannot be done, we absolutely get that there's a balancing act to be done with preserving elements of the site, but also making something actually happen. And that requires economic partnership with the town. And so from the standpoint of saying, well, we will give you the the, the, the formal partnership, but only after all kinds of process and a lot of money gets spent to vet it properly to come to the certainty, it becomes less uh, of an authentic partnership from our side of it. When we look at it and we say, well, you know, we have a good reputation. We invite you to look at other projects we've built. We have all kinds of things that we can throw into the mix to help hopefully get people comfortable. But at the same time, it's a two-way street. We're trying to um, allocate dollars towards this project and make it happen. And in order to do that, um, we want to be as comfortable as you guys want to be comfortable, frankly. So it's a, it's a, it's a dance. Right, and no one's going to be totally comfortable, I think, in that. You're, and you're, you're well, yeah, and no, no, no. As a business person, I take risk, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's the, that's yeah. the name of the game. I get that. Yeah. Um, but the, um, but the process for embarking on developing a parcel of this size with this many moving pieces, we are taking, we're sticking our necks out, getting involved now before this study has played out. But we look at it and we say that we do believe there's an opportunity based on the representations we've had to date of the town's mm -hmm. um, desire to see something important be built here. And we went and I'll give you a story in, in Danbury where we were recruited to come into the downtown and we did a similar tax incentive and we built uh, 115 apartment units and then that rippled into fixing up a building next door and bringing in some, some retail component. We also had another 586 units that we proposed a block away and again it was because of a partnership with the town where the town was asking us to get involved. 2008 hit and we've come out the back side of it with um, a project that's under construction now for 370 units. We actually sold that to a, another company but they are developing and the town's getting exactly what they wanted and actually they're getting more than what they ever dreamed of frankly. And so it was a process though 
where we agreed on core parameters that began the creative process of finding the right solution for that parcel. And we, we talk about this in terms of our approach to real estate. There's a site looking for a use and a use looking for a site. There are different organizations, they have different approaches to it. We do believe that you have to come and study the site, you have to study the surrounding area, and then you fill in the uses. And so from the standpoint of this plan, what's good about this plan is it's got every use under the sun right now. And so somebody at some point preceding my involvement in it felt that this was an appropriate place for commercial, retail, office, that type of thing, and a mix of, of, of residential. And so from that perspective, we look at it and we say, okay, it's a very attractive corner. We do believe that we can work with the bridge where you come right off of it and it's a, it's a funnel right into this if it's done well. And that can be very effective, it can be very well done. So what that looks like, I would be undermining a process that was started before I really fully integrated into this. Um, which is this external review that we're talking about and it's, it's going down in March. And so um, I've tried specifically to keep an open mind and not to get too committed to particular aspects of the pro forma. And so from my perspective, the leap of faith is to pro forming out a, an approach to the project saying, okay, well at least I know the board of selectmen are with me and now we're gonna go and do this public process of reviewing the existing entitlement, and then we're going to go back to the Zoning Commission and have another public process. And only at the end of that is there anything that can get built. So there are pieces. <coughs> what, what we look for is to actually complete parts of the process at each stage, as opposed to keeping everything open the whole time so everybody has the option to walk and without, without any, any real skin in the game, that makes it less desirable for us to start making all those incremental investments to get to the certainty we're talking about. So again, I would put back to the Board of Selectmen, what are the core gotta haves? Certainly there's certain, some money that needs to get spent, right, to, to do this. And this is, this is from the standpoint of what the incentive is is hoping for. You're hoping for the largest possible investment to get made on this parcel because it ripples into other things. It absolutely is a sign of commitment on our side. And if we're only getting it because we put $20 million into this, then, well, if we put $20 million into it, it seems pretty fair. And we have to go through a process, a public process. It's just not this public process in order to um, be able to act. And so from the standpoint of, you know, what's, what can you do? I guess you can come to the zoning meeting. <laughs> Say, these guys said this, that the, I mean, for us at the select, and whatever, I don't know. I mean, the, but the, the concept is that you try to start marching. I am an engineer by training, right? I like to do things. I don't particularly, maybe I don't have the best personality for these types of conversations because I'm sometimes a little blunt. But I look at this and I see an actionable project that could be exciting and fun that we can come out the backside preserving the character of the town and having something economically viable to boot. And if I didn't think that and I didn't think that the town collectively was, was hoping for the same end, I wouldn't be standing here. So the, the project basically, you're, you're saying that the concept of that mixed, the original mixed use development is going to be <coughs> continued housing, you know, the, the housing, same area, and, and I, you mentioned a, a square footage for a store, and that, did you say 70,000? Because that, I think, conflicts with the existing, right? Uh, no, I was, I was just trying to um, read to Brian, I think, things that were illegible on the photocopy. Um, and so I was calling out that there was one section that was a 65,000 square foot okay. space in the existing master plan. So no, from the standpoint of aggregating, 
what we did reference in our application was that there was 150,000 square feet of commercial. The reason that we tie this to some parameters or we show some parameters is so that we at least have context for later discussions where we say, well, our expectation was we were going to have this type of square footage of product that was available to us. If it's traded out where we do 20 more apartments and a little less commercial space, those are the things that will go on in this review by the consultants and we need to have that flexibility when we reach that phase of the process, which is going to begin soon but not conclude for a while. So it's a six month timeline on that and we'd like to be out there trying to make deals on the commercial components before that and again be iterating through all of the zigs and zags that come with compiling that first set of tenants, frankly, on the retail portion that makes the whole thing get ahead of steam and get going. So that's that's the process. And, and so and just to revisit, oh, sure. Dan, that the um, <clears throat> if the cost of improvement is over three million dollars, and that's the improvement, not what's actually the assessed value right now. Right then that may be fixed for a period not greater than seven years. So that's what the policy says. That's the maximum that the state of Connecticut allows us to adopt. We've adopted it. Sure. Um, certainly, I'm very interested in uh, incentivizing this project. This project has been on the books for a long time. We've been working very hard on it. There is a very uh, concerted effort on the part of um, not just the Board of Selectmen, but certainly there's people in the audience here tonight that are very interested in the success of this project. And I think you've heard that said several times because you've come to several meetings or your representatives have come. Sure. And I am committed to improving this property and um, just the things that you've said in terms of the Vibrant Communities Initiative and the work that members of the audience and you and I and others are gonna be involved with to make sure that it does match up with what is needed, what is marketable, and what's going to be successful. Um, and certainly in, in seeing the amount of money that needs to be invested in this project, there is a need for a partnership, as we've seen in other instances in our town. You know, the, probably the, the bigger investment, while it wasn't a lot, of, a lot of money, it was certainly a big leap of faith, was with the Brownstone Exploration and Discovery Park. And the town not only is in, was involved with that in the beginning, but we own the property, we went into an agreement with that entity. Um, as it turned out, it's been very successful, both for them and us. So nothing will happen. Nothing, this is, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it, it won't happen unless you do see the partnership that you just described. Um, and part of that is providing some incentive. Just as we were talking earlier about the water and sewer rates. Um, it's onerous for people to increase rates. We need to do it. We need to raise money, um, but we need to find that happy medium that people that are living in this town, as well as people that are coming to invest in our town, can reach that agreement and move ahead. And it will be successful um, with that. And you said that to me several times, is that you'll be successful if we cooperate and if the town is successful. Right. It's, it's, it's a marriage. It's a, it's a, it's a meeting of the minds together with the needs of our community as well as the needs of the business and the investors that are coming here. So and I, for one, definitely am interested in working with you to incentivize this project, move it, and get that investment in our community, not just for the town of Portland, but for this whole region. And as you stated a few minutes ago, the state of Connecticut, it's not easy to develop there's a lot of risk involved, but I'm committed to working with you and making sure that this is successful. Fred? Yeah, is it your intention to uh, entertain a motion this evening, or are you going to do it at a subsequent meeting? Um, I, I know my intention. I don't I know would. that I have specifics, but I certainly have an intention to work with Dan um, in terms of a tax incentive. Um, I don't have the specifics. I don't think you have the specifics tonight. But I think you're looking for a commitment from the town to be. Um, yeah, well, what we would ask for, to answer your question, is for the board to empower the first select woman to enter an agreement with us for 
the, the, for this development. Now, that charges her with making good decisions on behalf of the town as it relates to what of these parameters in the application need to be most highlighted and linked up to time and performance and all that kind of thing because it does all have to weave together. Now I'll throw out one other thing. We talked about sewer and water usage, right? I doubt anyone is yet at the level of pro forming out what sewer and water usage fees would be generated by this project. This is a revenue generator for that part of the town, separate and apart from a property tax piece. So having things, and, and, and people come and they move into an apartment and they register their car and they pay taxes on that car. There are other things that just getting the ball rolling that are accretive in the near term long before that assessment kicks in. So these are, these are things that, again, maybe I should have had it earlier in my presentation, but I, I do this and, and, and I'm, uh, you know, sorry if it was a little out of order, but that's another component of the, of the process. Well, it, it's uh, my only uh, confusion, if you will, is, uh, is, is it, am I correct in my understanding that you would then sit down with this gentleman and draw up an agreement, and in that agreement would be the parameters uh, of the construction facets that would be occurring with it so that uh, if we agreed with this, it would not be possible to say, well, we've decided we're going to drop all the residential and have all commercial. I mean, would that be possible? Would, would it be, if, if we no, agreed with this, or, or are you committed in writing <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that there's going to be approximately uh, 150,000 commercial and 85,000 residential? Yeah, what we, what we would do, what we would do is discuss the, how loose a parameter we want. So you'd have a core. The way I would propose, it if, I, if I were just sitting down one-on-one -on -one with, with Susan, or if I were, you know, addressing the board overall, it's not really much different. The idea is simply that, okay, we have 150,000 square feet, um, maybe you say, you got to build at least 120,000 square feet. There are 80 units. You have to build at least 60 units. And you set some parameters that are lower than the initial allocation in the master plan that gives you then the flexibility to actually be, to receive input for the tweaking of the site. But you'd set what your gotta haves were. And the thing that wouldn't change and wouldn't get cut into a percentage is the gross spend. So the $20 million still has to get spent, right? That kind of thing. And so you say, okay, this parameter to give an authentic process, because if we said, okay, the only way we're gonna get the tax deal is to build this, and then we start a process of review on the whole thing, well, you know what? We just wasted $50,000 on a review because basically there's nothing we can change because this is the only thing that we're allowed to build with this economic incentive. So you have to, layer it in in a way that's flexible but incorporates those, those gotta haves. And I think that the, um, there are good bones to work with here. And that was, that was the approach that we took to it and said, okay, citing this as a master plan is something that is, is generally done. You give some language that allows not material differentiation, but enough to, to have an optimization process be authentic and effective. No, I, I agree that that uh, uh, this can't be the exact thing. I mean, I agree sure. with you that uh, the economic conditions, etc., there are going to be some changes. What I'm hearing, I think, from both of you, is is there will be certain uh, set parameters which will maintain the character of the, of this uh, build right. this development. Uh, 
if so if I oh sorry can't be too wide a variation in what's done. Right, I completely agree with that. And if I'm the town, I'm looking at how many dollars are getting spent in order to get this. What is the time frame that you're allowing for the project to be completed within? Right, these are the gotta haves. You want that ball rolling. Nobody is going to come into your town and get approval for something that is just crazily different from this, right? Because frankly, you're not going to get through the zoning commission. So we're simply saying, signal to us that the town would like <laughs> us to start spending this money and working on this puzzle, I think we've talked about this as, so that we get a result that actually happens. And this is, this is a, a, a part of that process. And so it's, it's, it's an enabling part of the process, but it's hardly a, um, a blank check where you're saying, okay, now go off and, you know, we don't have run ragged on this. You don't, you, no, this don't is way too problem. controlled with many, you know, there, there, there are yeah. many, many reviews to this subsequent to now. I'm ready to vote if the rest of you I have a, I'll put a motion for it if everybody's comfortable. Okay, Fred. Um, I'll move the resolution that the town of Portland uh, thereby, hereby approves the application and authorizes the first selectman to execute a tax assessment fixing agreement for the purpose of fixing the real property tax assessment on the property in accordance with the terms and conditions set forth in Connecticut General Statutes 12-65B in the town's policy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ryan. Um, can you give that to our recording clerk so that she'll have that? Because I don't know if you were able to catch everything, I Sharon. Discussion? I would say that, that that's not in accordance with our policy, first of all. I think it does go back to the Board of Selectmen as opposed to the first select woman. On a basic level. But beyond that, uh, I would like some sort of presentation or some sense of what is here. You know, I, 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 I am someone who feels that you own the property, you can almost do whatever you want in some ways as long as it goes along with the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, however, does the town have, do, do I want to incentivize this project not knowing what it is? I just don't know what it is or what it's going to consist of or if in fact you're going to change it to uh, all housing or all commercial. Or, I mean, not, none of that is out there. I don't. I, I, but I think some of those parameters would need to be included within the agreement. Um, and certainly the agreement is not going to be written tonight or tomorrow um, and I will share that with you so that you know what the town is committing to um, in light of what we have in our policy as well as what we want um, that we talk about and we're continuing to talk about through this next month of March um, and I will do my best to um, make sure that agreement is representative of the town as will Mr. Bertram make sure that it's representative of his business. Um, I, I don't know that we can get into the details tonight. I just can't. But I certainly <coughs> will share with the select what we're doing, and I'm not going to go I, signing I, something I, that I don't have approval to do. I, I think, and I think you know well, me by well, now. Well, let me say, I, I, I'm not, I, I don't know if you want to be in that position necessarily. I think the Board of Selectmen might sure. want to I, I think. That's the way we do. Really that's the way we do business. I think it's really here, to protect you in some ways. We are honestly. very, um, very open, and we work with one another closely. So, and, and I would, but I would counter because I come in as the the newer guy to town, right? And well, we'll have you in Portland night very soon. <laughs> <laughs> and that sounds great. <laughs> and I'm taking as a starting point, Brian, um, that this has been out there for a long time and it's well understood as the uh, development plan. And so when I reference it as the master plan in this application, I'm thinking that it's in the collective mind of the town that there's this mix of commercial and residential. It will be materially 
what's here. And that's as simply as I think I can put it, because this is what we're needing to make the numbers work. We can't go through the subsequent processes that are before us and have this thing get turned into a, a job half its size. And the it actual won't work. incentive, Dan, doesn't occur until something is actually assessed. Yeah, we have to make so. the improvement. And then upon issuance of a CL is usually the event for the assessor to raise we're the not, value of the We're not giving you new money but in terms of no we have to put all the money out <laughs> but in terms this of is, the assessment there right. is a uh, if it's a graduated in or if it's an actual deferral of that tax on that improvement that delta um, that gives the investors time to recoup some of their costs so it, in, in that respect, I understand that and I understand the nature of this project but typically it's built and then you decide and you do it here, you're asking us to essentially give this away to you for seven years without knowing what we're getting. No, I, I think you're you're, I, no, I, 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 I would counter that. I would say that this is actually maybe can be highlighted more, but this does say a lot. There's a hell of a lot of information on this sheet of paper. Now, from the standpoint of um, Giving I would, away. I would just There's say nothing that I being can't given read away. It. I have no idea what it is. But, but this oh, sure. has been, th this was okay. approved in 2009. Okay. And what I'm hearing is is that you know there might be certain minimums, and it might do this, and it might do that. I mean, but that's and you know better than I that that's decided by the zoning commission. Um, what what we're asked what we're being asked is if we um, support the project and if we want to incentivize the project to get going by saying that there would be a deferral of the improvement on the assessed value for this period of time. Right. And then having that as a, a known commitment on the town side, it is a facilitator for all the subsequent processes and greater investments that get made because many millions of dollars many tens of millions of dollars go out before dollar one comes back and so this is a big process so what's your pleasure well, I, I, I can I know what uh, Brian's saying about the plan it's always nice to have a firm plan in front of us but I Knowing our, our first select person and knowing the advocates for this uh, project and, and the people who are going to be watching and working with the developer, um, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable that the right thing will happen. I, I would also say that Susan's very popular, but there could be someone else sitting in her position in three years, um, and I don't know who that's going to be. Um, the this power is supposed to be in the board, not in the not in the, in the position of the first selectman. Um, and, and it is, has nothing to do with, with Susan, but I, I mean, you have to take that into consideration. What do you, I don't but understand what you're talking about. Board, right? What there's no the power that the first selectman will have other than there is an agreement that the town will provide a time period under which the investor doesn't have to pay taxes on the investment. There are other fees, there are other taxes, there's personal property taxes, there's other fees that will come in. There will be ancillary work, there will be jobs, there will be other opportunities for people in terms of ancillary businesses along the way. I don't know what authority or additional uh, power that the first selectman would have um, because those determinations are made by, this, by the VCI process that we're going to be going through by the Zoning Commission. And, um, yeah, I mean, permit, there's a six-figure yeah, permit. Fee, I thought so the all motion kinds of was is that it was up to you to, to, to defer this for however many years. For it, it, it Wasn't that the motion, Fred? It was, uh, we are authorizing uh, uh, Susan to uh, um, enter into an agreement with the, with the developer. We can have it written back. And the agreement is what? That, the, that it's open-ended. 
all we did was uh, resolution was uh, as it is on that um, yellow the first page the town of Portland hereby approves the application and authorizes the first selectman to execute a tax assessment fixing agreement for the purpose of fixing the real property tax assessment on the property in accordance with the terms and conditions set forth in the statutes, state statutes. Um, so what what's happening is is we're providing an incentive, I think, to to the uh, developer uh, to go out and to. Uh, solicit people to come in and into our good town uh, and, and agree to do business. But, yeah, uh, I'll, uh, go ahead, you were gonna. No, I just wanna say, I think basically, Brian, we're, you know, we're uh, having faith in Susan to uh, de develop the terms of this agreement so that uh, the basic project will remain the same with flexibility enough uh, to change it enough to meet the retail commercial demands. And the, and the other but, thing is... But I'm, I'm assuming Susan will have uh, ideas, you know, in there of, of the timeline. Oh, and I have other this help. Way <laughs> Absolutely. So much of this and so much of that. Yeah. And, and that's it. If I were to throw out a few more words to the motion, it would be materially pursuant to the application filed. And that brings form to it. Um, it that, that rounds it out. And it the policy, as was passed by the selectman previously, I, the first selectman, whoever it is, cannot go outside of the regulations and the statutes. That therefore, And Fred made reference to the statute. So it's not an open-ended on the part of a person or of the board that it's outlined by the state statutes in terms of what can be used for an incentive in a town our size um, and our demographics and that's all we can do we can't do more um, you could always do less but you can't do more um, that's set in statute right but in terms of the specifics that process is, is ongoing and of course the town's attorney works with us on these matters um, which is uh, Martha Kalina, and they're very helpful to us, and I certainly um, will share with the selectmen as this proceeds. And um, I don't sign things that aren't approved by the selectmen. Are you ready for the question? All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. One opposition. Mm. Brian. And no abstentions. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Look forward to working with you. Talk to you soon. Thank you. The next item, um, let's see. Proposed lighting upgrade to town buildings. Lantern Energy is here. Devin, are you ready to? Uh, oh. Well, I guess I'll let you in. You're the best. Well, I don't know if I'm the best. I'm one of the best. <laughs> Andy Bauer, Chairman of our Clean yeah. Energy Task Force. Welcome Hi, everybody. Andy. Good evening. Um, okay. Devin's giving you out the minutia. Let me just uh, uh, kind of say what everybody knows just for the record. Um, Devin is a resident in town. He's been offering his services uh, pro bono. Uh, he's done an awful lot of work. I also would like nice. to recognize Morgan Kennedy, Devin's colleague. Um, and he, Devin has some good news for you. Um, just uh, an aside here, Devin is also assisting the task force with uh, repopulating the EPA energy benchmarking tool of which Portland has an account. We have all of our, we're going to uh, bring our electricity accounts for all town facilities up to date. And so then over the years we can see the effects of anything we do. Um, we are also looking backwards to, to kind of see what effect shows up on the town garage for the LED parking lots that got put in there. So um, uh, just to kind of make a suggestion, uh, I think you're going to like what, what Devin has to say tonight. Um, I would encourage you to start thinking about large scale, large scale renewables for some facility or area in town. There's a lot of money to be saved. 
Also, uh, we've talked about this before, but the street light issue uh, is another potential huge savings for the town. Um, that's for another time. Uh, right now, I just want to turn it over to Devin, and I think he's got some good news for you. Thank you. Hi. Hi, Devin. Thanks for coming. Yes. So um, we met back in November, and um, basically I came to the town and I said, you know, if I could come to you with a four-year payback on a lighting upgrade to the facilities, um, that that would be something that you'd be interested in moving forward with. So we went throughout the town, and we went to all the different buildings throughout the town, and um, there was some opportunity throughout the town, not everywhere inside the town, but there was some. Um, and so what I, uh, if you, if you turn to this blue tab, I, I put it in front of you. This is basically the overview. And the buildings that we're talking about in the town are the town hall, the Buck Foreman building, the compost center, the sewer plant, the highway garage, the senior center, and the dog pound. Those were the buildings that we found opportunity inside of. Other buildings do not have enough runtime, and there's not the right technology right now out for that. I would suggest another two two years to take come back and take another look at this. Um, but so what I'm proposing is that um, I like to go from the macro to the micro of the of the project. So the total project cost um, for lighting upgrades, we're looking at LEDs throughout different facilities. Um, would be $27,933. The utility incentive, which is 38%, is a uh, $10,000, leaving $17,000 balance. Now, because of we're talking about the Small Business Energy Advantage Program, it offers you 0% on-bill financing for this um, for these projects and these upgrades, right? So, if we take that 17,000, we break it up over the uh, uh, the term of the loan, which would be 2.8 years. This would be on the on the uh, on the um, bill, um, you would see a four hundred and fifty eight uh, dollar payment, right? But because of the savings, the reducage and wattage, uh, there would be a five hundred and forty eight dollar savings, which would be a net savings of eighty nine dollars a month to the town. So the town doesn't outlay any money up front, but they have savings, um, and that would be over, like I said, the two point eight years, and the payback's two point seven. So they stretch it out to loan a little bit more, and that's what gives you the net savings. Um, and once the loan is paid off, you'd have an annual savings on the bottom here of $6,581. Um, and yeah, so that's the overall, overall of, the, of the project. Like I said, it's not every light. You're not going to see the whole building change. It's just the places that there was opportunity inside of. So. Um, so I was looking this, uh, looking through this uh, when you sent it out uh, yesterday, and um, I, it looked like um, I was just, you know, there's a lot of bulbs oh, that yeah. you've gone through, and um, I noticed that um, what kind of bulbs were already, the majority of them didn't seem like the, the percentage of the savings wasn't, d like, didn't jump out, but it was the number of bulbs, like, thought that, you know, over that many is, is where we see the savings. Yeah, it's really, you know, um, you know, where we're looking at is, like I said, what's going to make you save is, is the amount of runtime on that significant bulb and the, and, the, and the current wattage, right? So the sewer plant is an interesting place. We talk about water, right? Yes. We need to save money there, Devin. <laughs> I know, so I hear. <laughs> so... Um, <coughs> And that's page 22, if you're interested, to, to look with me. So there's a whole bunch of different fixtures that are there, but they're, it's actually way over lit for what it needs. Um, and uh, so we were looking at this and saying, you know, um, Morgan helped spec this project with me. Um, basically that we have 200 watt high pressure sodiums, right? We're going down to 14 watts because it's amazing that the technology changes. And that's why I say, wait two years come back, do this again, because it's advancing so fast, and like I said, there is, is this LED revolution that's going on, so. I guess I didn't get too far, because I was looking at the 60 to 49. Sure. Before. Yeah. yeah. So I, hadn't, I didn't see the same, yeah. It's and like I said, there, it's, 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 a, it's a combination of all the different projects together, but this was the best portfolio that I could make, you know, based on what, what is currently uh, there, so. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think we should yeah. do this. Yeah.
Thank you. Obviously. Yeah. Doing, well, I, mean, you know. yeah I, I like it because it's not a huge investment. Right. Um, but it's certainly a good return. Yes. And I think it's a good good start for us to how, receive it. How to often? Save some money. We've done this before, or have we never done this? We did sort of a global look, but nothing specific. And what Devin and I had talked about is let's do something specific as to how we can actually make a change. And, right. And I asked you, and you followed through, right. not to make a huge project. Right. But let's start with a modest project where we'll see return rapidly. Right. And it looks like we're going to be able to do that, particularly since, unfortunately, rates are rising. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Um, right. The, and your, the, your payback will go faster right. once the rates go up. So this this so will all actually, the more reason right. to save more energy. energy. Yeah, right. Yeah, I don't see a uh, contrary to this. Okay. What do you want to do, folks? Board. Sounds like a no Is there a motion for us to proceed? I'll, I'll move, uh, I don't know, to um, adopt the uh, current proposal from Lantern Energy. And what, I don't know what kind of agreement. Are there agreements we have to sign? Uh, yes, I, I, there are a lot of utility documents. It's about just as thick as this thing so is. So you would authorize so, uh, me to authorize sign? Authorize Susan to sign all necessary documents. Thank you. Nice job. And, and task well, force. Task force, yes. And of course you Yes. Can. And I look forward to um, seeing savings in our bills. <laughs> Great. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries unanimously. Thank, Thank you. you. Were there other things that you wanted to say, Andy? Or? Um, Is that at another time? Don't do too much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we deserve it. The next item, uh, letter C, is just a quick um, statement. Review, discuss ordinance on the tax abatement for our volunteer firefighters. Because we're talking about ordinances, there are some um, tweaks that we need to do to that. I need to do some more research and bring it back to you. But I wanted to put it on here so that you know you have three ordinances that we're looking at. We're looking at um, um, three different. What are we looking at about? I just read the ordinance. What What are we looking at? Yep. To? Um, the methodology by which we provide the incentive for the volunteer firefighters. I want to make sure that it's up to date with all laws and, and so forth. So it's just a, really a revisit of it. And I'll have some specifics for you. How old is that? Um, does it say on there, Ryan? It's I been know. quite a few years. I know that. Yeah. It might be 1998. That sounds okay. about right. I yeah. don't remember it coming up before. No, so. it's it's yeah. been on the books for a while, and I really think it needs to be revisited and updated. So mm -hmm. I will um, be bringing something back to you. I need to check with our uh, our attorney on that. Make sure we're <coughs> in compliance. Okay. That's all I wanted to say on that. Yeah, Susan, when yes. You, when you're looking at that, my only question on it was that last sentence. And I just, just in terms of uh, um, the the point about uh, uh, people who are uh, residents who are serving out of town as volunteers, and, and uh, I was just trying to yeah, visualize how do you how monitor do something like that. We and we do have some members of our fire department that are from another town. Um, I don't know. That's something I need to research because I don't know that we can tell another town what to, I know I can't. I can't do that. Yeah, I, I, so. once you get out of town, it's okay. Right, but we do have uh, some members that serve. Uh, yeah. They don't live here, so uh, that's something I want to research, yeah, the too. The intent is good, but the, just the mechanism and how to. Yeah, you, know. you can't do. And that, that's the case with a lot of our ordinances as they, as they age. 
you're either not implementing them or you can't implement them because the laws have changed or they're not practical. So I'm trying to revisit these and get them done and up to date. Good point. The next item is letter D, a refund of excess payments. Kathy? I make motion we refund Melissa A. Amato, $13.82. Second. Seconded by Brian. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Um, status and committee reports. Are there any committee reports tonight? No? Next is public comment. Is there any public comment tonight? There is. Okay. If it pleases the board, I'd like to remain seated. I think you can hear me clearly. Yes. My name is Alwyn Dial. <coughs> I want to commend the board for its attentiveness to the town place discussion that took place tonight. More significant than perhaps most people realize because <clears throat> we heard from a developer, but the town also has a developer for the same property. And it was referred to in, in the discussion tonight. There are going to be a number of plans offered on the best economic commercial development of that land site. At the same time, we're embarking on a plan for the next 10 years of this town, the conservation and development plan. And the same interest groups that are focused on the importance of this Elmcrest development are going to expect that that conservation and development plan reflect the same energy same foresight, same considerations. Personally, if I was disappointed tonight, it was that I did not hear in the propositions made the leading statement which I was hopeful for, and that is that the character of that property, its present character, is the greatest asset for its development. I did not hear that. I think you know what I'm speaking to. Protecting something is one thing. I've heard it said, protecting the historic property, protecting the character. I'd like to see this enhance the character of this town. Not protect it, enhance it. Its character and its economic resilience and, and uh, prosperity. So again, thank you so much for your careful attention to this. It's, we're going to be partnering with the developer in steering committee meetings that are coming up. They're going to, and I'm so pleased they'll be sitting with townspeople and town officials um, with this consulting company that is contracted now to independently come up with an economic plan. The developer will be part of that, and I think we'll learn a lot from them, and hopefully they'll learn a lot from us. Again, thank you, John, and ladies. Other public comment? Tomorrow night. Yes. Uh, the, the earlier you were talking about sidewalks. Yes. The uh, Complete Streets Committee or the group will be meeting at the Waverly Center at 7 o'clock. <coughs> You're all invited. It's a committee that's just started. They, they spoke a little bit uh, at the last meeting, but maybe the meeting before that, on how they're going to try to connect with safe walking areas, uh, sidewalks, trails, and okay, things that, like that in the of town. Uh, they're also going to look into some grants that are available that might be able to uh, enhance the sidewalks by maybe building, you know, replacing the sidewalks that are there already. Also, looking into the safe school sidewalk initiatives that are out there. So, you're all welcome to come. Thank you. You're Thank you, everyone who is still here and who was here. <laughs> it's helpful to have you come to our meetings because uh, it's uh, a lot of information, a lot of work. Informal discussion. 
by the selectmen? Fred? Um, just I'm not going to belabor it, but Route 66 again and, and safety, I, th I think we should be periodically looking at that and, and trying to at least assist the public way uh, efforts of <coughs> the legislators in the state. Uh, it's every, it seems like every day uh, somewhere around 66 is a horrible accident. I do have a meeting next <coughs> week in East Hampton to talk with them about um, the safety. Um, and I will be going out there to speak with them. Isn't, isn't, um, isn't Ron supposed to come soon or to talk about? Yes. Um, that's, yes. that's why I, I completely agree, Fred. Uh, I think that as soon as the snow melts, I'd like to see, you know, get the speed sign, you know, the radar up and, um, and hopefully, you know, and if you meet with East Hampton, we can, I don't know. Sure. Do something. Yeah. No, there's already some um, some physical work that's going to be done. They're going to be putting, um, they call them rumble strips. It'll go down the center of the road. And I know that they're starting to do that in Portland. I don't know whether they're going to try to do that for the entire Route 66. But if you go to the median, or the middle of the road, I should say, you'll hear that And if need be, might wake you up or realize that you're going over, like they have on the sides of the highways. So that's a good thing. Uh, the Chevron signs and some of the other um, signs that help guide traffic have been replaced, which is a good thing. Um, I know there have been some discussions by some other members of other towns. They're interested in actually widening the road, which is really um, um, would be, be wonderful to enhance safety, uh, but um, I don't know. I don't know. <coughs> Thank you. That would be the state. That Very would important. Be expanding that. Yes. The road. Oh, that's the all the state. Yeah, yeah. all yeah. the state. No, it's not East Hampton or Portland. <laughs> no, it's a state road, clarify. so yeah, that's it, um, it's quite a process to improve a road, as you've probably followed. And there is a large transportation initiative that the governor put out today, so it's apropos. It's needed throughout our state in terms of improvements to transportation. Uh, the specifics of the plan, I don't know, but I know that it's an initiative that uh, is very important for our community and our entire state. Anything else under informal discussion? Um, I have nothing under follow-up <laughs> items, and I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session for the purposes of land acquisition. So moved. Second. Made by Kathy, seconded by Ryan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. So we'll take a brief recess.